Hi, my name is Bianca Mason and this is the video screening requirement. Um, they have five questions. Why do you want to work for Cox Autom Automotive? Um, I want to work for Cox Automotive because of the diversity, um, the work-life balance that's available. Um, it seems like this company is very reputable. I've only been in Atlanta for about a year, but you know, I've done my research as far as, you know, employers that the best place to work type of employers that I've been, um, looking for. And Cox does fit the description of what I would be looking for. Um, I want to work for Cox Automotive because I feel like I'm getting stagnant in my job that I'm currently at. Um, I've been working there for about two years and it just seems like I'm stagnant. You know, you know when you get stagnant. You know, you know when you get stagnant, when you feel like you're not going to progress anymore. So I am looking for advancements, uh, advancement opportunities. Um, the job that I'm in right now, um, it, it seems like the company takes a lot off of the top, you know, um, I went, I went through, um, I was hired through, um, a company that has the, the Apple contract. And, you know, I happen to know that Apple advisors make 18, $19 an hour if you're hired directly in the company. And this company cut off the edge and it's only paying us, it started us off at $12. And so a big jump from getting paid $18 to only $12, $13 an hour, they're taking a lot off the top. And that's not something that I really liked. And, and then on top of that, you know, I, there's not a lot of advancement. I've been there for two years and I've been in the same position for two years. I've been meeting my metrics. That's why I still have the job, but I just don't see that there's a lot of advancement opportunity unless you have some form of, um, I don't know. I just can't explain it, you know, cause I've seen people, you know, in this company that have had lower stats than I have that get promoted to senior advisors and, and things like that. So, you know, I'm kind of, I am looking for something or looking for a company that has more advancement opportunities. Cause I think I'm qualified to, to do more or, or to make more than $12 an hour. I think I'm worth more. I believe that I'm worth more than $12 an hour. Let's just, um, I'm just, I'm just saying, um, okay. All right, question number two. How much customer service experience do you have? Um, I have been working in customer service since the beginning of time. Um, I'm 38 years old and I had my start in customer service. I mean, I've worked in restaurants. I've worked in retail sales for Staples. Um, I've done, I've done, I used to work as a delivery driver for the Charlotte Observer where I'm from, I'm from North Carolina. Um, so I've done that. And then, you know, I've been doing, I've worked in a call center before for doing concierge services um, earlier. So I have ex customer service experience. I have call center experience. Um, I'd say I have, because I've been working since I was young. I've been, I'd say I'd have, I'm 38, I have over 10, 15 years worth of customer service experience. So I kind of know what to expect. Um, I know how to deal with customers well. Um, the current job that I have, you know, on a good note, they trained me, you know, um, Apple, Apple, Apple contract that I have, you know, they've trained me to learn how to look for signs, um, as far as how to approach people, learning the different types of personalities, um, that each customer may have and how to adapt and personalize the conversation or the support to cater to that customer so that they feel like they're special. Um, so, you know, that's what I do. You know, I, I, when I talk to customers, you know, I always let them vent first and I don't interrupt them while they're venting. And I make sure that they say everything that's on their mind before I start to present solutions to resolve their issues. Um, so customer service experience, I, I have a lot of that. Um, okay. What does good customer service look like and poor customer service look like? Um, poor customer service is, say for instance, poor customer service would be, say for instance, if you spend to have the customer on hold for too long and don't acknowledge the customer 
you know, that they're on hold. Um, it's, you know, I've always learned that it's very important when you put customers on hold to make sure you tell them why you put them on hold and how long that it'll be that you're putting them on hold. And if you end up having to wait for another department, you know, every two to three minutes, you have to go and check on the customer because, you know, waiting on hold, it might seem longer than what it really is. So, you know, doing those things, poor customer service, hanging up on the customer. Um, if you hang up on the customer that provides uh, that, pr that's, that, that provides a bad experience for that customer who's faithful in, you know, the products that you're providing. So, you know, definitely not hanging up on the customers, definitely not interrupting the customer while they're talking. Make sure that you give them, you have to take control of, you know, with good customer service, you have to take control of the call, but at the same time, you can't do it in a demeanor that makes the customer feel like, hey, um, like, I mean, I can't really explain it. But I guess, you know, with good customer service, you, you, you provide an answer in a timely manner. You, you ask the right questions. You know, with good customer service, you have to ask the right questions to get the answer that you want so that you don't spend too much time troubleshooting something that may not even be the problem. So, you know, good customer service, having an uptone voice, you know, when you talk on the phone, you wanna make it seem like you have a smile on your face every time you answer that call and you want that customer to feel, to, to reflect that. Because if you, if you answer the call and you sound like you're angry, then it could turn into a bad call or what they call DSATs that would cost you your job, you know, so, you know, having an uptone bit, uptone, you know, uptone voice when you talk to customers is good customer service. Um, making sure that you resolve the questions, making sure that you ask the customer if they understand the troubleshooting or the resolution of their issues that you're having, making sure that they understand that, you know, um, good customer service. I asked them, you know, at the end of the call, are you satisfied with the support that I provided? And either it's a yes or a no. And I've always known that asking them that question sometimes helps me to get more VSATs um, or green surveys, as opposed to not mentioning that at all. Um, you just want to make the customer feel like they're welcome and make them feel like they made a right choice in um, using your products and services. Okay. Number three. Okay. No, no. I just did number three. Okay. Um, number four. What makes you stand out from other applicants? Um, I stand out because I, I know I retain a lot of knowledge. Um, I can retain a lot of information if I'm properly trained to do the job. I I pretty much retain a lot of information. Um, I do have a degree in web graphic design. So back to the other question, why do you want to work for Cox Automotive? I see that there are some other positions like the creative, the graphic designer. I have a degree in web graphic design um, from DeVry University. And so, you know, definitely I think that this technical support position um, would give me the entry level position that I would need to go after that job because that's the job that I want. That's the job with Cox Automotive that I would want. I want that graphic design job where you would train them to be the creative specialist or something like that. So this is definitely something if I could, you know, if, if I'm hired, that's definitely a position in the long term that I would be looking to proceed um, to to pursue. Um, within the company. That's kind of the route that I would like to go with it. Um, I stand out because I, I've worked for, you know, I've worked a lot, worked for a lot of major companies and all of their customer service um, training. Um, I've retained all of that information over the years. Um, I've been working in technical support, um, troubleshooting iOS devices for about two years now. Um, so I know everything about an iPhone. I've pretty much almost know everything about Android phones too because we do end up having to do a little troubleshooting with that so I do have a lot of t I do have about two or three years of technical support under my belt so I'm capable of learning new material I'm capable of um, learning that at a fast pace um, I learn at a fast pace um, I'm very dedicated to whatever employer that I choose to to work for as long as there are job opportunities and I don't feel stagnant in any way. Um, I do have a lot of loyalty for any um, 
employer that I work for. So this isn't something where I'm just gonna jump or hopping from, from job to job. I really do keep my jobs. You know, I, I, I do my best to meet the quotas that are set for me. And I'm, majority of the time I do meet them. Um, so um, what makes me stand out? Um, I think that I, I think that I, I think I'm, I'm good. I'm good to work with. I follow, I do follow instructions. Um, I'm good at following um, instructions and I am very disciplined when it comes to um, the work environment. I've been working from home. Um, another advantage is that I've been working at home for like the last four or five years. So I am very disciplined as far as what the expectations, you know, not having a supervisor on top of you to tell you to do X, Y, Z location. I just pretty much do it because I value working from home. It's something that I've gotten into that's helped, allowed me to help me take care of my kids better. And so it seems like my performance performance is better when I work from home. Um, I'm an outgoing person. As you can see, I love to talk. I run my mouth a lot, you know, so I'm not shy at all. Um, I definitely w enjoy helping customers. It's, it's what I do. It's what I've been doing all of these years. Um, I think I'm just a down to earth type of person, kind of like the environment that you all have set forth when I'm Took, took, a, took time to research your company on your website. And this seems like a type of environment that I would love to work for. I've worked, um, I've worked from home before and sometimes the environment can seem kind of cold. Um, when I um, worked for um, another job a couple of years back when I first started, but I can definitely tell the difference in the environment. Um, so, I mean, I think I stand out. I think I stand out a lot. I think my personal personable skills along with my along with my intelligence to learn new material and to attain it and to retain it and to be able to help customers. I think that I um I think that I am I think I'd stand out. I think I stand out on my own just based off of my personality alone. I mean, I I don't really think it has anything to do with um, intelligence or anything. It's just that I I know how to talk to people and I know how to get what I want and I know you know, sometimes um, you have to be able to manipulate phone calls and, or, or the, the telephone calls in order to, you know, in order to, to get the information from the customer that you need so that you can help them. So I'm very, very good at that. And I'm a fast learner. Um, so I'm, I'm very excited about this position. And so, you know, I'll put 120% into it if I'm hired. Um, okay, last question. Um, I don't want to talk y'all to death. Let's see. What do you value the most when choosing to work for a company? What do I value most? Um, I value kind of like what I said in the beginning. I don't want to feel stagnant in any company. You know, companies will tell you that there's advancements, but, you know, with the company that I'm working for, those, the, the advancement positions um, it just seems like I'm just not there because I have an associate's degree and it seems like a lot of the positions, um, what do I, what do I value most when choosing to work for a company? Um, yeah, stagnant, I, I, you know, advancement opportunities. That's, that's important. That's probably the biggest thing why I'm searching right now, um, is definitely advancement opportunities. Um, what do I value most when choosing to work for a company? Um, the environment is very important. Um, I feel like I have to get along with the people there because you hired me. So, you know, me being able to get along and um, get along with the people that are in the company. I mean, that's that's important for me. If I don't get along with, in, in, with team members um, on a job, then it's going to affect my performance overall. So definitely being able to get along with, you know, the people that are working on this at the same job too is very important to me. Um, what do I value most? I am balanced. I I I value most the life work balance. Um, something that I noticed on your website, and that's very important to me. Working from home. Um, it's provided that life balance. It's provided me an opportunity for me to take care of my kids because, you know, I'm a single mother. I have two kids. I have a nine-year-old and a 20-year-old. 
and you know it's very important that I'm able to have time to spend with them you know and working from home provides that because it cuts down on a lot of time having to go to work to commute back and forth to work and that's a lot more time that's saved that I could be spending with my kids especially my young one um, so definitely the work-life balance is probably the number one probably the main number one thing that I value the most that I pay attention to along with you know having personal skills to work with whoever is employed with your company so that's probably the main thing that I value most is the life work balance and I'm very excited that you all provide that type of environment seems like you all it seems like the website seems like the people are down to earth so um, it is, it, you all kind of let me see what do I value the most when choosing to work for a company yeah those are the three things really the life work balance whether or not I can get along with the people on the team, you know, and be able to collaborate with them and learn things as well. Um, so those are really the two, the main thing. Money, money is important because money is important too, because I've been working in the field for a long time. And um, even with technical support and everything, I, I think it's just that when I found out how much less how much more when I guess when I found out how much more those advisors were being paid through the company and um, when I found that out that kind of that kind of turned me off a little bit um, so you know I don't think that they were being fair as far as the pay there's like they're cutting everything off the top and they're pocketing everything and then just they're you know I'm, I'm sorry if you're supposed to be paying $18 an hour and you're only getting paid 12 that's a big gap that's a big gap, you know, and I feel like I'm putting forth more effort than I should for that position. So, yeah, I guess money does play a role, but only if I, I uh, it doesn't really play much of a role. I just don't want to be deceived about the compensation, you know, and that's probably the main reason why I'm looking for somewhere else to go because I'm not making enough. And then you all for this position, it's sixteen dollars an hour. So it's way more. And it seems like I'm getting all that money back that I was that it's way more than what I'm getting paid right now just to work on an Apple contract $12 um, as opposed to 18 so that's probably the main reason why I was looking for something else that might be more um, stable or or you know something that I value I value you know I value honesty I feel like I've been I've been deceived as far as you know the job that I'm in right now um, when I found that out, that's why I'm looking for something else. But I value mostly um, the life work balance, the working from home. And, you know, loyalty is something. Loyalty is important um, to me when with the company. What do I value most when choosing to work for a company? Um, I don't like to be deceived. Okay, I don't want to be deceived. I don't want you to tell me, hey, we're gonna, you're going to work here in this position. And then after six months six or seven months um when i'm supposed to get the raise or when i'm being told i don't get it you know these are things that have happened with the current employer as far as being deceived as far as the amount of pay that you know we should all be paid and so there's a lot of issues you know going on with that i guess that's not the problem that's not about this specific thing but i just wanted to give you an insight um why um, I'm trying to lead the current employer that I'm at. You know, I think that's important for you to know. But that's those are some of the things that I value the most. Um, I'm very excited to be considered for this opportunity. Um, I definitely will put forth my best effort to do ex what exactly what I've been doing for any employer, and that's trying to be the best. <laughs> so um, again, my name is Bianca. Um, I am very excited. I hope you choose me for this position, and hopefully I look forward to working with you soon. Thank you.